Hey everyone, welcome back, hope you're doing well. Today I've got a video on my thoughts on Gwent, the Witcher card game. This is the card game based off Gwent in the Witcher novels and obviously the mini game in The Witcher 3. It's currently a full release in public beta. It's free on GOG on PC and you can also get it on PS4 and Xbox One. It's similar to the game in The Witcher 3 but it does have some tweaks to the gameplay so if you played it on there then you'll kind of be knowing what you're getting yourself into. It's a turn-based card game. It's quite different to its competitors, so I'll probably be looking at comparing it to, say, Hearthstone or Elder Scrolls Legends. So minions don't engage in combat like they do in those games. So basically each card has its power level, and some will have abilities, and basically whoever has the highest power at the end will win the round. Each game is best out of three, so it's first to two rounds, and each player will take turns playing one card at a time. The big difference is that you don't draw a card each turn, so you start with your 10 at the start of the game, and then you Basically keep going until the game runs out when both players have no cards or if both players choose to pass. You can draw extra cards through abilities by other cards however. When you build a deck you choose a faction and each faction has multiple leaders that you pick. So each deck you build needs to have a leader and you're also limited to certain amounts of gold and silver cards. Each leader will encourage different deck types of playstyles as well as the faction you choose kind of has its own things and there's a common pool which you can pull from as well. Each round will probably take you anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes, so a full game could take anywhere from you know, 10 minutes to maybe even half an hour for those really long ones if you're going to 3 full rounds. The game has a arena mode which was announced and released recently, and then it's got casual and ranked modes and there's also some solo play which they will uh, keep releasing new content for as the game gets further and further to release and I'm sure after that as well. The game is really fun, it has really nice animation quality and attention to detail from everything from menus to sound effects. The game is a lot of fun to play, it's quite satisfying, you know, taking out other cards or playing abilities and stuff like that. Everything just looks and sounds really nice. The animation quality is both really nice in cards that you play and say, you know, dealing damage to other cards or placing hazards. But it's also really good in the animated cards themselves, so like other games there's kind of premium levels of cards, golden cards and they're animated really nicely, some of the best I've seen. Puts Hearthstone's animated cards to shame. As for monetization, the game's free. It does offer a few in-game currencies, and you can obviously buy card kegs, which are this game's version of card packs, either with that in-game currency or with real money. It does seem fair to free-to-play players, so it's pretty generous with how much of its currency it gives to buy your own packs. There's daily quests, there's also extra things when you level up, obviously the arena will give you card packs when you achieve high land that. It's got nice little things like it has a dedicated currency to making cards golden, so unlike say Hearthstone where you've only got dust which you use to either craft cards or craft golden cards, Gwent has one that is only used to crafting golden cards, so if you don't care about those golden cards then you can use your main currency just to get either more card kegs or craft cards that you need which is a nice touch. And also something else, when you open a card keg you do get 5 cards, but you get to choose the 5th card out of an option of 3, which is again another nice touch there for getting more value out of those kegs. Say another Hearthstone or Elder Scrolls, Elder Scrolls getting 6 cards, Hearthstone getting 5, um, they're all basically random. But in Gwent you do get to choose that 5th one, which is cool. I feel like it does set itself apart from the other big online card games like Hearthstone and Elder Scrolls Legends quite well. It's different enough to be its own thing, but it's also similar and familiar enough for players who like kind of that genre of online card games to get in and play quite easily. Obviously the game's got a bit of its own kind of pre-set up fan base for people who played The Witcher, but you can enjoy it if you've never played a Witcher game before, but if you have then all the laws there that you'd expect, as well as all your favourite characters, monsters, and all that good stuff. So to boil that all down, would I recommend it? Yes, definitely. So it's fun, it's free, it's really nice to look at and it's really satisfying to play. There's a good community behind the game with active subreddit and forums. The development is obviously still not quite done so things can change as it's just an open beta right now. They're hoping for a release sometime this year in 2018. The developers seem open to criticism and feedback. They're happy to hear what people have to say and do generally feel like they want to make the game better. Unfortunately, the game is currently only available for PC, PS4 and Xbox One. There's no mobile release yet, so if you like playing your card games like on the bus or something like that, then you can't do that for Gwent just yet. They're hoping to have a mobile release at some stage, but there's no date on that. I'm assuming it'll be after the game is out in 1.0 for release. So if you like competitive card games, uh, or The Witcher, or both, 
uh, like I do, then I'd recommend you give it a shot. It's free. The public beta is available now, and I think you'll have a good time. Thanks everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time.